Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another live Total OS Today show, podcast number six. This is a weekly podcast show, if you are new to this, where we discuss everything that is technology-based right here on the Terrific Linux Distro community. And for tonight's show, we will cover favorite Linux and, I guess, and or Windows uh, pieces of software apps, if you are using Windows or a dual booter, like myself now this is the point where my co-host goes windows boo and this boo. is when i and this is when i say arch linux yay hi spatry <laughs> what's up hi <laughs> total us today welcome on welcome all welcome to everybody who is in the listening room and welcome to everybody in the studio in the house we have gumbo man we have pink cast sneaky linux from across the way has joined us we also have william generic myself mr spatry and back to you total west today yay arch oh never mind i already did that joke okay yes uh, yeah uh, hello i'm running mint now it's green it's minty well, goody two shoes to you. All right. Hey, you're running it too. Yes, I, I will say that I am running Linux Mint, the Mate or Mate version, and I do like it. And maybe one of these uh, Sunday nights we'll do a show just on Linux Mint. How, how does that sound? I think All right. That's a cool idea. Yeah, it'll it'll go it'll go great with the uh, Linux Mint boot camp I have up there. Excellent. Okay, so let me get started with one app for Linux and one for Windows, and then I will pass it on to the panel. Everyone will get plenty of opportunity to mention two, three, four, maybe five apps if you talk fast enough, but not too fast like Spatry, because then if that happens... Okay. <laughs> First off... <laughs> hey, I haven't had any coffee, I'll have you know, and actually I had to wake up just to attend this. It's been a rough day today. <laughs> We, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Okay, my one of my favorite uh, Linux-based uh, apps would probably have to be Caden Live and Spatch. I think you and I talked about this the other night. Caden Live, right now, as far as when I boot into Linux, Caden Live right now is is the exclusive uh, video multimedia yes. media. Yes, multimedia editor that I use. It's I will say it's ninety percent stable. Uh, I use that to edit everything, video, audio, because it is simple, even for a dummy's Windows brain like myself. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, it works. It's intuitive. Someone who is coming from a Windows PC wanting to try, say, Ubuntu Linux and wanted to try KDEN Live, assuming that everything is up to date and stable, it is marvelous. I have to agree with you, Total West. Today, as you know, now I don't know if you uh, took my suggestion. I'm running the uh, Kidian Live SVN version, which has its own uh, Melt framework and its own freer plugins. It gives you the latest and greatest. And guess what? It does not crash. I haven't been able to get it to crash at all. It works beautifully. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to try it out, but I highly recommend that you do. The only drawback is, though, if you do download the uh, Kaden Live SVN, you're not going to get OpenShot working. But then again, Kaden Live is much more powerful, in my humble opinion. Yeah, I have the standard uh, Kden, Lim, Kden Live downloaded. I mean, it, it seems okay for me, and I'll think for now, I just, I'll just i keep what I have, but thank you for the tip. Uh, let's see. As far as something I use when I boot into Windows 7, Boo. the Arch Linux. Oh, I'm sorry. Yay. <laughs> okay, uh, what do I use? Well, uh, as far as playing my multimedia, I use the standard... Uh, Windows Media Player, what is it, version 12? I lost track of what is installed in Windows 7. Now, now the reason why I use that, it is a terrific organizer. It organizes my, my pictures, my videos, music. I mean, it does it all. It's As far as I can tell, it's never crashed on me. It's very, very easy to use, simple, dummies proof. Now, you know, on rare occasions where it may not play a certain uh, media file, VLC is also terrific it plays everything and that's also cross-platform for both windows and linux based operating systems okay that's my oh that's my top two i would say just off the top of my head so what i will do now now i will go down the panel and you're welcome to mention at least two maybe three if you like your favorite apps so let's start with gumbo man 
Um, one of my favorite apps that I like to use in Linux has to be, yes, the Firefox web browser. And that's available on any operating system that they have. I mean, it has all these um, add-ons like um, Adblocker. They also have like um, add-ons Hydra Address and uh, Flash Killer. And they also have Personas. And you can make your own personas to dress up your web browser. And they also have stylish to really create some nice effects on your um, web browser. <laughs> and um, another one I, another um, app I like is actually a game called uh, Zenotic. That has to be one of the best first person, free first person shooters I've ever played. You can create your own maps and in, uh, and the maps are cross platform to work with um, Nexus and um, also though it may not have that many players, the players I do play with are extremely um, good and it's a very fun experience for me. Cool, Gumbo Man, do you have another app or just those two for now? Um, I guess I can add one more to the list, list being Deluge, which is a BitTorrent client, which is um, very good because you can hide your, um, you, you, you can hide your um, IP address um, because um, e even if you own like a movie per se, you can download a um, uh, copy as long as you're not going to sell it. But even if you do that, um, you can get some heat from the MPAA. So, yeah, that's very good. Deluge okay. is an awesome client. Yeah, I have to agree there. Cool. Pincast, toss me three apps. Oh, my first one is SSH. That's short for Secure Shell. What that does is allow you to remotely connect to another computer and take control of it. Now uh, you, you just get a command shell and, and there are other ways to get graphical desktops and you, and you should be able to uh, get X11 going. You know, you should be able to open up a, a program through the terminal, but you can. There are ways like VNC to um, get your desktop, but basically I can I can take control, if I'm on my laptop, I can take control of my desktop, send, receive files, do whatever I want on my desktop, run stuff on my desktop. Let's say there's a, a firewall in the network that's I'm elsewhere and a firewall is blocking me from a site. I could get into my desktop, then use my desktop to go to that site, and I get around the firewall. Uh, I'd have to say my next favorite application would be Terminator, which is a terminal emulator. It's it's tiling too. You can uh, do. You could split it vertically, horizontally. You can tab it. it it's pretty customizable. So it, it makes easy multitasking through the command line, and it's just incredible. I love it. And my third application, I would say, would have to be um, OpenShot because that's what I use for my videos and. A very very simple and easy to use interface. I don't do too much with the multimedia work, so I just need something that I can pick up and use. And OpenShot delivers on uh, that. Okay, cool. Now, Sneaky, you've been doing this longer than I have, so sir, if you have more than three apps, like four, you are more than welcome. So toss them at me. Okay, guys. But now, I don't actually use Windows. We don't actually have a Windows machine in the house. But all my clients use Windows. My favorite Windows application is now called CCleaner. Many moons ago, it was called Crap Cleaner. Okay, before they got bought out by a, a virus company, or well, antivirus company. Now, if you want to remove all stuff and get stuff out of your Windows machine, this is a really, really, really big help. So that's one for you Windows guys. Do you want another Windows one? Do you want another Windows one? Yeah, you okay. do, don't you? Okay. Yeah, we'll give you another Windows one. No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to do that. Open shot. One of the best open source video editors out there, apart from Caden Live. If you're not used to doing videos. OpenShot will do you. Caden Live is more advanced. It's for the more advanced user. Thirdly, 
Audacity cross-platform again you can use it anywhere loads of schools use it you can do anything you really 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 want to do okay and you know what I'm gonna leave it at that because some of you have got some more stuff to say thank you sneaky yes I too also use a C cleaner in Windows and it's quite marvelous now Spatry I know you have a whole bunch so if you can keep yourself from falling asleep I know you just woke up <laughs> toss, toss them at me sir all right well I heard a good one called the Terminator which is uh, multiple terminals and I use Quake, which is a drop-down terminal much like the uh, the uh, the drop-down terminal you had in games like Quake and those sort of things we're putting in your cheat codes and everything and this has tabbed uh, terminals that you can easily navigate between so that you can multitask in the terminal SSH awesome uh, awesome program for remotely connecting to other computers in the household or on a network where you can make updates to the system while the person is still using it non intrusively and that sort of thing awesome program audacity is amazing I do all of my audio editing I use blender for my 3d animation M macromedia Dreamweaver, Fireworks, and Flash. I have the Studio 8 installed and running natively in Wine. That was my favorite Windows application, and now I'm running it in Linux. I also use FL Studio uh, or Fruity Loops. Uh, I used to use that Windows. Now I have that running in Wine, and I have that running in natively in Linux. I use GovC View for all of, for shooting uh, video from my webcam. Kadian Live, you just can't beat it. It is the best uh, video editor for Linux, and I'm using the SVN version as I stated before if you really want to tap into the power of Kadian Live I suggest that you use that at the cost of not being able to have um, OpenShot working on your system at least that was what I experienced with it and there are so many other applications I could rattle on I could create a whole show on Spatry's favorite applications there but that's just the tip of the iceberg but I do want to uh, go back on what you were saying with Windows Media Player. If you want Windows Media Player to play everything in Windows, I highly recommend that you guys check out the K Light Codec Pack. When you download and install this, Windows Media Player will play everything and in most cases it will also generate thumbnails for just about every media file you can think of. Back to follow us today. I think uh, Spatry just woke up, and you stole my tip on, on the K-Lite Media Pack. But yes, uh, that is a terrific uh, add-on download, and that will, that will allow Windows Media Player to play everything just about as everything as VLC will play, Spatry. Is that correct? Yes, it will. And uh, there was some, there was another tip I was going to throw out, and now it just escaped me. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Who's left? William Generic, uh, what favorite apps do you have? Well, my favorite apps are um, ZSNES, a Super Nintendo emulator for Linux, and a Sega, Gen Sega Genesis emulator called Gens GS. It's available for Linux as well. It's actually a good emulator. It's free to use and free to get. You can unput the Super Nintendos in. You can also do um, the Sonic games in the emulator and NES games such as in, like NES games such as Super Mario, and it's fun and easy to play. I wanted to also say this: if we if we have you know any Windows listeners or Windows Linux dual booters, probably the easiest place. Uh, uh, program to use to search and download uh, software is the Ubuntu Software Center. Uh, very easy to look at, colorful, simple to use. Now, Spatry, I think in some of your videos you said you would prefer the Synaptic Package Manager. Could you elaborate on that, please? Well, only working in uh, Linux Mint. Uh, I experienced an issue with using their software center to uninstall programs. So I prefer using uh, the Synaptic Package Manager for adding and removing programs from my system. Now I really don't remo remove that many programs from my system now that I have Linux Mint running the way I wanted it. I just did that initially after doing the uh, install of Linux Mint to get rid of the applications that came pre-bundled with it that I just knew I wasn't going to use. Okay, just a couple other things, uh, apps here. Sneaky had mentioned Radio Tray. This is a terrific lightweight program to stream. Awesome. Yeah, I like Top 40 Jazz, Smooth Jazz. I, used, I haven't used it in a while, but that's terrific to stream radio stations across this wonderful planet of ours. 
I also use, like I mentioned VLC. Uh, I use Kazam sometime for uh, yes. screen. Yeah, screencasting. It appears to be more stable now. So in Ubuntu version twelve point zero four, I use um, I use the program. I'm just going through my list here quickly. I use the Ubuntu One. Uh, the freebie, the I believe it's five gigs. That's where I upload the audio versions of these uh, shows. Usually do anyway, so you can download it uh, from the Total OS Today website. Uh, let's see. I use uh, a program called Easy MP3 Gain to uh, normalize the uh, podcast, and uh, there's also a similar version. For Windows, I believe it's just called simply MP3 Gain, and it's it's never failed me. And that's a terrific program. Say you, oh, say you've ripped, I don't know, 40 of your favorite favorite CDs onto your computer because you want to transfer it to your iPod, iPod, or media player. You can use MP3 Gain to set a certain level, uh, say between 90 and 92 dB, so all of your music will play at the same volume level. Extremely convenient to use and honestly as as far as the podcast when it needs uh, normalizing or at a certain volume I use uh, easy mp3 gain uh, somewhat exclusively if if I don't or if I'm just mucking around in Kden live I will use the normalizing function in Kden live but I believe uh, Spatra, you mentioned audacity I believe you can normalize audio uh, very quite easily in in audacity is, is that true Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, I'm even going to put a tutorial up on this because when editing audio from podcasts and that sort of thing, some volumes may be a little bit lower, you know, from some of the speakers and higher from the others. And uh, Audacity has this magnificent compression effect that you can apply. And um, I have a I have a nice little setting. And what it does is it it it, it does, you know, it just brings all of the audio up to a certain peak level and then you can run your normalization filter over that to reduce the volume a little bit as a whole and it does a much better job I did try the mp3 gain that you suggested that I try out and I really didn't know that notice that much of a difference with the audio but then again it could have been the audio format that I was working with it's possible, yeah. I mean, like, it seems to work for me when I use, I mean, it works either whether I use Easy MP3 Gain to, uh, to you know, to mess with the audio or, or in KDN Live, but uh, I haven't had any issues with um, either, either piece of uh, software. Okay, uh, let me put you guys on the spot. You know I dual boot, and, and you know my channel caters to, uh, as Spatry says, the one-shop stop for dual booters, you know, for Windows dummies. Now, when I say dummies, I mean that with all due respect to all Windows people who wanted to try Linux-based operating systems, such as two, two of the ones that we have mentioned, which would be Ubuntu, Linux, uh, Mint, uh, XFCE, as Spatry uses, or I prefer Mate, or even Zorin. So let me go down the panel here. If you had to recommend the absolute must-have program or application to use that a Windows user or a window a new Windows dual booter cannot live without what do you think you would recommend let's start with gumbo man um, uh, I have a few actually one is the Ubuntu software center because you can search for applications and the other one is access to a web browser where you can Google questions okay pincast uh, I uh, kind of hard to answer that because different applications do different tasks. I, it would depend on what the person is doing. Fair enough. Sneaky. Well, that's a real, real, real easy one. You come over straight over from Windows, you go into a Linux, Linux machine, you want something you know. So you're going to watch Firefox and chromium stroke chrome for your web browsing and do everything you really want to do because that's all they do is that not right i know i know i would have to agree there spatry what say you well i say and this was critical for me when i started using linux wine um wine is not an emulator it is a compatibility Very layer good. and 
The thing is, there are a number of Windows applications I absolutely cannot live out. You heard me rattle some of them off. I even run my games. I've got Dragon Shard, Freelancer, Homeworld, Turl, Never, Never Winter Nights, Phantasmagoria, The Witcher, Alien Breed, Two Worlds 2, and uh, Free Space. Uh, running natively in Linux and there are so many other programs that Wine will support and there is a good uh, website called Wine HQ where you can find out the steps necessary to get your favorite applications and games working the latest version of Wine supports more programs and applications play on Linux as a front end of Wine uh, that is great for installing games vineyard is great for installing applications i have tutorials on my channel that uh, will take you through everything you need to know about it so if you're new to linux and you want to try it out but you're still married to a few windows applications and games wine is definitely the way to go um i have originally have dual boot windows and linux recently this year pc linux os but i haven't really have managed to put to take the time to put wine in it so i decided to switch between windows and linux if i had time to use some windows programs so let me ask you this let's pretend i am a brand new windows slash linux dual booter i just booted into my brand new ubuntu or zorn or linux and tell me real quick what's the number one program i should learn or go to right now the number number one program um that's going to be a tough one let me see hold on would wine be the answer? Fair enough. That was mentioned, but that'll that'll work. Uh, for me, I love the Ubuntu Software Center. I love the way it looks. It's 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 how can I say this? The way it looks, it's comforting, it's inviting, and if a brand new Windows slash Linux dual booter wanted to go straight to a program right away, I mean, besides you know going into like uh, like sneaky Linux, at, you know, browsing with Firefox or or Google Chromium and all that stuff, which is fine. But if I had to recommend the number one thing, so a uh, a Windows Linux dual booter may learn what Linux is all about, I would have to pick the Ubuntu Software Center right off the browse. Uh, right off the bat, if anything, just to browse and see what is available. In my opinion, it is dummies proof. And it's a great way to find alternatives to the software that you commonly use, such as if you use Microsoft Office, obviously you can find alternatives for that. LibreOffice is right now the contender that's out there. And there are so many other applications, you know, and I like how it lays out and gives you a screenshot and description of everything so that you have an idea of what you are downloading. Not only that, but other people rate those softwares. So, you know, you can download them by rating and try them out. Yes, very good. Okay, the uh, our time is almost up here. Let me just say that all you Windows folks or wannabe dual booters who are listening to this, and if you're still not sure or are still lost, uh, feel free to go to the Total OS Today channel on YouTube or Spatry. Spatry's latest um, uh, tutorials, the boot camp on the Linux Mint, Mate, I'm sorry, not mate. The, the the XFCE is wonderful. Uh, the series of videos I've done on Zorn, take a look at that, or even Linux Mint. But I guess what what I'm trying to say here, we are here to help you out. And of course, you know, Sneaky Linux has, has been doing this a long time. Thank you, Sneaky. Yes. Yeah. In, in fact, the, no before, problem. I yeah, Sneaky. In fact. Uh, before I started my channel, you are one of the few channels that I followed since the beginning because you just got straight to the point and you know what you are talking about. Your videos were very professional. You know, it just sounded like you knew what you were talking about. And as a Windows, well, as a newbie at the time, well, not quite a newbie, I felt comfortable listening to Sneaky Linux. So there you go. If you are a Windows newbie, dual booter, uh, no question is too dumb to ask. We are here to help. It is a very friendly community here on the LDC, the Linux distro community. That's all I have to say. Spatry, if you want to take us out, sir. All right. Once again, it was great having all of you. Thank you once again, Gumbo, Pinkcast, Sneaky Linux. Thanks for joining us. William, thank you. And uh, thank you, Total OS, today for having me today. And thank uh Thank you, all of you, for a wonderful show. Thanks for everybody participating in IRC. And we will see you next time in your Linux future. Good luck and may the source be with you.
welcome. I love it. May the source be with you. Oh, yes. Thank you. That just made my day. Da, so da, he da, da, he da, takes da, the red pill. Takes the red pill. Oh, why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? Spatry, I am not your father. <laughs> the Force is with you, young Skywalker, but you're not a Jedi yet. Folks, we have just disproved the claim that we are professionals. We are very sorry. We will do a better job. <laughs> well, this is a family show, so I guess this would be nice for the kiddies, right? Hey, we, we cater to children of all ages. I always say, aging is mandatory, growing up is optional. <laughs>